Alright guys, so we are back with another video. Um, this is going to be the IPF Worlds Recap 2023 in Romania. I did it downstairs last time and now I'm upstairs. I don't know, I just wanted a little different change, change of scenery. But basically, I'm going to give you guys a little run rundown recap of prep and everything going into Romania. Um, it's really hard to do everything. Uh, going into the meet like just trying to balance a lot of things with the business side and the coaching side school and a lot of things going into prep um and then just trying to get trying to get out content for you guys the easiest way for me to get out content is instagram because i just like posting on instagram and it's just very short form content and it does well on instagram so that's why i like it youtube it's a more dedicated audience and i don't know i just feel like you just have to put in more work to get more out of YouTube and I just have to do better with that. And I know a lot of people that just don't do YouTube for that certain reason because they have to put in so much, they have to put in this amount of work to get this amount of return. But then once you get to a certain point, it starts paying off tenfold. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna just try to do better with that. I just have to have a set schedule of like what to post, when to post, blah, blah, blah. Um, but anyway, so IPF Worlds recap. This prep was really good. I had a really solid prep. Um, everyone has been saying that they've had shitty preps. I'm not sure if I buy it. I'm not sure everyone, I don't know if they're, the thing is there's difference between having a shitty prep and then just not training to the standard or not training um, like you should. So I'm not sure which it, which it is or they're just lying to themselves, but I had a great prep. Um, I went three for three on my squat, on my squat bench deadlift, squatted, Six, seven, six, eleven in training. Uh, bench three seventy, which was also I knew that bench wasn't going to correlate to the platform. Um, I thought five kilos less was going to be good, which is what we attempted, and it was it was very close. Um, but bench, I bench three seventy, which is great. Um, I was really worried about elbow depth on the on the day uh, in competition, so I started sinking a little bit deeper. But did that, uh, which was a little bit. The pause wasn't that great um, in training. And then deadlifted 683, which was the second heaviest deadlift I've ever deadlifted in my career, um, regardless from the last year, 700 in a mock meet. So I had a really good prep, 755 kilo training total. Was really proud of myself. And I knew that 750 to 760 on the given day was going to be there. Um, and yeah, we just had a really, we just had a really good prep. Um, just going to get stronger though. The thing is I had a really good prep in towards my expectations. So I have done 780 in the gym, but that was with the peak. That was with everything. This prep was really good going into the meet. Um, my bench is still getting up there. It's still taking a hit from, uh, the injury and the bench depth rules. But now that I'm starting to get accustomed with the bench depth rules and stuff like that. My bench is finally back up to yeah 160 range, not all the way back up to 175 uh, or 170, 175 um, to comp standard, but it is almost there. And by next competition, I definitely want to bench 170 or 175. And that's been like the biggest thing that's been holding me back, just my bench, um, just getting those extra kilos in that bench because then if I have a massive deadlift, I'm like a very well-rounded lifter. My squat is absolutely, my squat was insane um, in Worlds. I came in second and I was 2002 and the other uh, guys, the first place was, the, the winner was 2000 and he was two years young, uh, two years older than me. And then Andrea from Italy was a year older than me and I squatted more than him. So I'm a, I'm a very good squatter and I know it's going to just get better than that. Just the bench has been the thing I like the most. And I personally think it's the easiest to get up or it's the easiest to, not it's, it's not the easiest to get up, but it's just like you have the most control over your bench. So we're gonna do a lot of things. I'm ready to hit the gym. I kind of like irked to like not going to the gym this week because I've never taken a full week off of training. I am gonna to go to the gym today because I'm doing a challenge and I'm doing, that's this is a whole nother story, but I'm doing a challenge today, 5,000 reps to the bar of, on bench press and we'll see how that goes. I'm not sure if I'll be able to complete it, but we'll see. I'm gonna to try to latch you in the whole time, the whole thing. But basically, prep went really good. We had a good um, leading into the prep, but I was sitting around 190. 
it, to me, I was I was not too worried about this. I was like, oh, I should probably have a good easy water cut, gut cut, get down to around 184, 185 in the morning of, and then just spit out the rest. So I woke up, I was 186 pounds the day of, and I woke up four hours before weigh-ins, and I was like, okay, this is not a problem. I've cut from 187.4 in the past. So I started spitting, and I was spitting at the, probably the slowest rate anyone has ever spat. Um, it just was very slow. I didn't know why. I'm not, I don't know. It just, no saliva was getting pulled from my mouth, or I just was spitting just bad on the day or incorrectly. I don't even know. But I wasn't losing a lot of weight to spit. So then I started running around downstairs, um, hoodie on, pants on, just sweating, and did like probably three miles downstairs in the Romanian gym. Um, I was ready, before the gym even opened at 6 a.m., I was ready down there from 5.30 to 6, just running back and forth in the hallway. And then I went into the gym, did laps around the gym till like 6.30, 6.35. At that time, I was like 184.2. Um, so I was like, I still have 1.2 pounds and it's like 30 minutes till weigh-ins. So I was absolutely fucking scared. Was now sprinting down the hallways trying to lose weight. So I was walking before, now I'm sprinting, trying to get more, trying to get more energy used, trying to sweat more. And it was working to a, to a small extent, but I just thought it was gonna be much faster rate. And then that's when it was around 650, 655. I weighed in and I was 183.8. And that's when the clippers came off. And the clippers came on. And I just started shaving my head. Um, I thought I was going to lose a lot more than I thought when I thought that I had lost. I lost 0.2 pounds, which definitely helped. But um, it, wasn't, it wasn't crazy. So 183.6, need like 0.7 pounds left. And then just started running back and forth, sprinting down the hallway, spitting like... We have a Jolly Rancher in my mouth, running, sucking on it while I'm spitting, while while I'm running, and then spitting in a cup halfway, where uh, Carolyn's holding it for me. Going the other side, running, still sucking on it, and then spit. You know, it was like a crazy process. Um, but then we finally made weight, 83 kg. I didn't think I was gonna make weight. I'm not gonna lie. Um, if Carolyn wasn't there for me uh, on that day, because she helped me out so much, I truly don't know if I was gonna make weight. And it was like. I don't know, it was such a stressful situation um, because I was like, wow, I'm actually not going to make weight. Like, I actually was, like, tearing up. Like, I, that's, like, one of my biggest, like, fears was just not making weight and not making it to the platform because you come all this way to not even make weight and to miss that. So I was, like, I almost gave up, but she just kept, she literally kept me grounded. She kept me, like, with, you know, she just, she had full faith in me. And then we made weight. Um, and then I recomped really good, had like three bananas. Um, I didn't eat too much, but I had a f massive amount of water, uh, liquid IV, Gatorade, trioral, getting all the sodium, potassium. I took four triorals that day, which is the most I've ever taken. Usually on meat day, I take one, maybe two, but that, I took four that day um, because obviously I cut a lot of weight. So uh, I was drinking so much water. And then by squat, I was feeling really good by the time I didn't feel that great warming up. I mean, like, with the bar, but, like, every minute that passed, I just felt better and better because more water was getting in me. And, like, while kids were just, like, warming up and just, you know, um, you know, foam rolling, getting ready, like, I was still drinking a lot of water, still getting that bloat right when we were touching the bar. So I probably took another tri -oral and was feeling pretty good for squat. Then I, like, stopped drinking water to, like, to settle that bloat. And then we were just blowing up squats. So opener was 562. I'll show you that here. absolutely blew that up like once I squatted that I was like oh we're gonna have a great squat day um, I mean I was like yeah squats gonna go really good today and now I know now I know just like being bloated for squat or that bloat that I felt with all that sodium potassium and water just it, it makes me feel really good for the squat you just have to get to that level of bloat and then let it settle for around five to ten minutes and then start squatting and then getting a little bit of movement in there um, so we took that and then we took 595 here.
and that was absolutely blown up. I mean, it was the fastest 595 has ever moved, um, ever, like literally ever. That was the fastest 595 has ever moved. And then I wanted to jump up 10, so I wanted to jump up to 280, but uh, my handler, uh, John and Craig in the back, thank you guys, we went up 12 and a half. I think I had 10 to 15. I might have even had 15, um, but that was going to be too risky on the day. So we went up 12 and a half, and it was the perfect call. I mean, the chances of me getting 15 were like probably 30% chance to 70% chance not getting it. And the me, ch me getting 282 and a half was 60% 60 60 chance me getting it, 40% chance me not getting it. So it was the risk that we needed to take um, with 280 being a little bit more conservative and just like you're going to get this 100%. Um, that's what I felt like on the day. I had 280, 100%. 282.5 .5 was the risk that we needed to take on that day to get that number. So that was a huge PR. Um, 10 kilo meat PR. Absolutely great. I mean, I haven't hit a squat PR since... Squat meat PR since... Uh, oh my gosh. It's been since junior nationals. Uh, that's when I hit 272.5. And then at Worlds last year, I hit 270. And then I hit 272.5 this past year at junior nationals. So I added 10 kilos since then. And... Finally getting back in my groove, finally figure out my squat. Um, just needed a lot of volume in my training. But, yeah, super happy with that 282.5. 623 pounds, got me the squat silver. And I'm happy with that, obviously. I'm like, you know, I can't be not happy with that. I obviously wanted to place top three um, because once we saw the projections, one and two was pretty out of the mix. Just got to get the bench up because if I get the bench up, we're right in the mix. But first and second round the mix, but third was definitely in the mix if I had the day that I wanted. Um, but basically bench was, or squat went good. Then we weren't for bench. Bench felt good. It was just really worried about elbow depth and... I'm not sure what to do that, what to do in the future. I guess we'll combat that when it comes up, but I'm assuming just trust yourself that it's gonna pass. I'm just nervous. The only thing I'm nervous about is if it doesn't pass on the first attempt to go up and then take something heavier and sink it more. Um, so we're just gonna be always training to standard, just training more than I usually do, and that's how I train with my squat. I sink the shit out of my squats because I never wanna get called on squat depth. And I'm the strongest squatter, basically, at, in our weight class. Um, you know, so uh, I'm gonna probably just have to, you know, sink, not sink my benches, just, you know, hit elbow depth and just be confident that every single time I do that, it's gonna be elbow depth. Because in the style that I used to bench was, you know, very high arch, very limited range of motion, but that was, to, that was for the rules, and that was to lift, to lift, as, much, to lift as much as possible. Now it's the game where you have to lift a standard, and if you don't lift a standard, you're going to be losing kilos on your total, and I think that's very huge and powerful. So we're going to make sure we combat that. But basically, I took 150 for an opener, three wide lights. Ah. 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 Now this is the thing that maybe we should have gotten 160 for the second, gotten 160, and then taken a two and a half kilo jump, and then you know maybe not have gotten that, but getting that two and a half kilos extra from that second, you know instead of taking 157 and a half, take 160 to get that two and a half extra, it helps you out because maybe for me I am I usually don't get my third attempt bench press, I usually die out by my second attempt and. I, my second attempts looked pretty easy, so 347 looked pretty easy. I thought 350, 
8, 358 was going to be there that day. It just unfortunately wasn't. Um, but maybe that's the thing to note that to take that middle range on that second and just, you know, that third will always be chipped to two and a half. Because if we take 155 in the second, we're going to just jump to 160. So just things to note. Um, but yeah, I wasn't happy. I wasn't um, upset with the 157 and a half. I was just thinking maybe we should take 160. But then if you fail 160, you're left with 150. Um, so just things to take a uh, note in the future. And yeah, so then we ended up failing 162 and a half, which was unfortunate. It was very close though, but just gotta get stronger. Come on, big piece. grind harder and just get bigger so moving out to deadlift is where just the problem started happening um, just deadlift grip was just not a problem at all in prep and then it just ended up being a problem on the platform the only thing that sort of I guess is interesting is I wasn't the only one that failed on deadlift grip so a lot of mixed grip pullers were failing as well and I haven't trained with straps since before junior nationals um, I have completely thrown them away so I've done every single deadlift set with mixed grip and I've done heavy holds going to the meet around two weeks out I started doing heavy holds with you know 80% of my max which maybe should be built up more but I did with 80% of my max around 550 to 570 for 10 second holds three sets and it wasn't a problem in training I dealt at 683 so I was good for with my total you know 750 on a day, if I match what I did in training, that's what have been 750. And then if I, yeah, so that's what I was looking for. You know, 310 to 315 on the day, but just deadlift grip just started being a problem. And it's just so in my head about just the grip because on the last warm up on 265, it just felt not like it was giving, but it just didn't feel secure. So even in the back warm, the back warm up room, it just didn't feel the best. So I took 287 and a half for my opener. It moved great, it moved easy. You know, on that day, I'm like, I probably could delve 700. My strength is for 700. But my grip just didn't hold up and then just my positioning was a little bit off but I really attribute it to my grip so we're just gonna have to fix that going forward whether it's just doing more holds or just switching to hook grip I have wanted to switch to hook grip for quite a while now and now that mixed grip doesn't seem so not efficient it just doesn't seem like it's like working anymore uh, because at these high level meets we got to just be perfect I think hook grip may be the way to go so this next cycle, I probably will be trying hook grip, Pro probably because maybe um, because I tried it in the past. It's just the pain has been very bad, but we'll see. Maybe we can get accustomed to it and you know just just pull something, pull something with hook grip. You know that's that's really it. That's really all that is. I mean, just got to get better and just you know either do heavy ass holds with mix or. 
pull hook grip and switch and just never drop a delft ever again. So we'll take all those, um, we'll take all what we learned from the meet and fix it going towards the next meet. So for the future, I mean, right now we don't have anything planned for the rest of the year. Next year we are, so Open Nationals is in March and tied with University Nationals and then Junior Nationals is in May 15th. So Open Nationals is in Nevada and University Nationals in Nevada and then Junior Nationals is in Texas. So we're not sure, me and Kyler are not sure what we're doing yet. If we're gonna do Open, if we're gonna do University, if we're gonna do Junior, I'm not too sure. But the only way to qualify for Junior Worlds again next year is to like, is gonna be through University Nationals or Junior Nationals. So you could use your total through University Nationals but let's say you have 750 kg at 83 at university. Someone could beat that at junior saying, oh, Alex hit 750, let me do 752 and a half. Um, and also it's based on build up points and how stacked the team is one through nine. So things to take into account. I just want to get stronger. I just want to have a big enough total. I just want to, I don't know if I'm going to go up a weight class. I don't know if I'm going to go 83, go 93. I'm not really too sure. I just want to get stronger. I just want to make myself proud. And yeah, that's basically it. So that was my Junior Nationals recap. Me went decent overall, but we just got to fix the elf grip because just fix the elf grip and get stronger. That's basically it. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate you guys. I will be doing more content, hopefully. Getting it back in the train next week. And, yeah.